you explained it right. I, I mean, it's it's kind of funny how this all went down, at least in, in my opinion, just as, as far as the Broncos. Hey, we know it's a marquee job. It's an unbelievable market. They're great fans. It's a good stadium. They got a good facility. All the things are in place to be successful. Yeah, and, and then, of course, like you're talking about, the owners being there, everything. So it seemed like it was going to be one of the hotter job openings, right? And then we just went through time here, and you're going, wait, I mean, another interview. Wait, nothing's happened. What's going on? Oh, what well, this is taking a little longer than I thought with all the money the Penners have. And, the and hey, we got a Russell Wilson and a defense and some weapons to play with. You know, man, it all looks positive. What is the issue? You know, and then it started. You started to hear some of the rumors that you know you heard, I heard, whatever, uh, true or not, I don't know. But it started to appear that it was, yeah, things weren't on the right track. It was a little bit dysfunctional. And then it goes to full circle, back to Jim Harbaugh this weekend, right? Where you start to hear the Jim Harbaugh stuff, and and there's conversations between the two there. And now it's Sean Payton. So, yeah, it did seem like maybe they got desperate, whatever didn't happen, whatever, but they made big moves at the last moment here and and clearly got the best coach available, in my opinion, in Sean Payton. And before we pivot fully to Payton, the Harbaugh stuff should not be underestimated. There's a story to be gleaned and reported. And I just made a point earlier in a post at PFT about the one-year anniversary of Tom Brady's fake retirement. By the way, happy anniversary, Happy fake Tom, anniversary. Where, <laughs> yeah, as you and I were pulling the threads and pushing the truth to everyone late last February, that's really kind of when it started. Remember, we actually got on the phone and compared notes yeah, over the weekend. How right. do we want to couch this? How do we right. want to present this? Because you and I were both hearing in our own Little separate circles, worlds right. enough that it was coming together. It's like, there's something here, folks. That's an example of the stuff that the usual suspects in the NFL information trafficking industry don't share with us. They tell us that D'Amico Ryans is going to be the next coach of the Texans 15 minutes before the Texans announce us. They tell us that Sean Payton's going to be the next coach of the Broncos 15 minutes before the Broncos announce it. The real journalism in this space, and Jay Glazer told me this years ago, happens when we find out the stuff they don't want us to know. So, yeah, what really happened between the Broncos and Jim Harbaugh right. falls into the category of stuff they don't want us to know. But, Chris, when Greg Penner gets on the plane and goes to Ann Arbor, not Jim Harbaugh, comes from Ann Arbor to Greg Penner. Right. And Greg Penner, the CEO of the Broncos, the former CEO of one of the most powerful companies in the world, when he's the one who schleps to Michigan in January – to meet with Harbaugh, that tells you something. Exactly. They wanted Harbaugh. A hundred percent. And now, oh, 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 do we're, we're just doing our due diligence. (laughs) Bullshit. Sorry. Agreed. (laughs) I I challenge flag on that too. There's more, there was more to it. And there, there's a hell of a story to be told on how the Broncos ricocheted around from Harbaugh to D'Amico Ryans to Sean Payton, back to Payton, this way, this way, this way. And I really do think at some point yesterday, someone at team headquarters pounded a fist on the table and said, we look like idiots. We got to get a deal done. Well, yes. And and, I mean, you're saying it right, too. And you don't make that trip unless you're extremely serious. And, you know, from 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 everything I know in the situation is that Harbaugh was Harbaugh was the the number one choice or the guy that they seriously were looking at this weekend. You know, how it went back full full circle to him and all the other, you know, things that got on in in this whole conversation, I I don't know. And you're right. That's a great story to be told, and I'm sure we'll hear little bits and pieces of it. But, you know, from from what I've heard that, yes – that that was a serious conversation and that Harbaugh was considering going to the Denver Broncos once again. And he hemmed and hawed and yes, the node and then yes, to the node and then didn't do it. And then I don't know if it was that moment when they went, okay, we didn't get him. We got to go get Sean Payton. Why it was in that order. I don't know either. I don't know. Again, Sean Payton would have been the number one pick. Maybe it was just, just that order because of the draft picks. Of course, that was a huge part of this whole conversation, the compensation to the New Orleans Saints. But, uh, Mike, I, I'm with you, and, and I know that, yes, uh, Harbaugh and the Broncos, that was more than just flirting together. That's for sure. 
you could get Harbaugh, a proven NFL head coach who came in and turned around the 49ers right away and has done a very good job, especially in recent years at Michigan, yep. for no compensation to anyone. Yeah. That's part of the analysis. And also, how much would you have paid Harbaugh versus how much are you going to pay Peyton? That's, That's part another of it big well. part but of it, too. You're right, they Mike. decide to circle back to Sean Payton and get the deal done with the Saints. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.